A lot of free-to-play games have this contradictory reputation of being some of the most expensive in the gaming industry. You would think with the name free-to-play it would be something that doesn't tax your wallet at all, much less a little. But of course, in the realm of gacha, these so-called free games are notorious for making players bust out the old Benjamins. What's interesting is that the amount of revenue these titles generate far surpassed that of actual paid titles. Genshin Impact is in the top 20 highest grossing mobile games of all time, right alongside other big money stings like Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, Fate Grand Order, Clash Royale, and many more. But what sets it apart from others is most notably its release date. At the time of writing this video, Genshin has been around for less than two years, which if you look at Clash of Clans or Candy Crush having been released almost a decade ago, that means if hypothetically Genshin were to be 10 years old itself, its projected earnings would sit well above 25 billion US dollars. The fact that it's made an estimated 3 billion in less than two years puts it on track for being the game with the highest annual revenue probably of all time. I'm not going to go into the broader scope of microtransactions because that deserves its own video, but something that's been on my mind for a while are the implications of Hoyo's pricing systems on the quality of the game itself. So I guess, to clear things up, rather than discussing the politics or the ethics surrounding its business model, I want to touch on how it plays a role in the game's experience, for us, the players. Is Genshin Impact too expensive, and would the game change for better or worse if the revenue model was different? Let's get into it. There was a lot of debate on this topic at the start of the game. Doubtless you've seen big names and content creators incessantly complain about how expensive it was and how they had to spend a year's rent or take out a second mortgage to get Max Constellation Diluc, yada yada yada. It's prevailing wisdom at this point that Genshin is objectively not worth spending money on. No gacha game is. I'm not one of those people who parrot the notion that buying digital goods is a waste because I personally disagree. People spend money on things that make them happy. For some, it might be a new pair of shoes. For another, it might be a night on the town. For another, it's on video games. Regardless, it doesn't take a financial consultant to tell you that blowing hundreds or sometimes thousands of dollars a month on this game probably isn't giving you worthwhile gratification relative to the cost. That being said, the gacha system is inextricably linked to that experience. A common argument used to judge those who wail for characters is that they don't need to spend extra money in order to complete all that there is to do in this game. At a fundamental level, this is very much true. I often say in my videos that Genshin is by all accounts a very, very easy game. The difficulty of its content is nowhere near the maximum potential ceiling the means to undertake that content can reach, and anything that comes remotely close does not compensate you with any meaningful reward that would justify going above and beyond for it. Despite that, however, the game manages to earn well over a billion dollars in revenue from in-game purchases every year. So clearly, there seems to be a disconnect in reasoning, if all of us are aware of how exorbitant the cost of even one new 5-star is, let alone several copies of them, then why are we buying into it? Contrary to popular belief, it's not gambling addiction. At least, gambling addiction is not the driving force behind a player wailing for a character. It's what gets people to stay a whale, but you first have to become one. The real answer is a concept I'm sure many of you have heard before. FOMO, fear of missing out. In a lot of ways, playing video games is like food. Just like how food at its basis level is to provide you energy for sustenance, video games are a way to keep you entertained and therefore occupied during idle parts of a day. But when it comes to food, we're way past the point of relying on it to survive. In most first world countries, people live to eat, not eat to live. Sure, you can get by on just rice, vegetables, water, and fish, but obviously that would get monotonous in due time. We crave variety, that's why we eat all kinds of different things even though at the end our bodies break it down into the same macro and micronutrients needed for survival. The same applies to video games. Players have a natural desire to seek the fullest experience of a game possible. That's why most if not all successful games employ some semblance of selection. Character selection, weapon selection, cosmetic selection, what have you. Pragmatically speaking, none of that is really conducive to achieving its essential experience. You can complete every course there is in Mario Kart using only Mario and only his standard kart, but the game offers you an array of characters and vehicles to choose from. You can become the champion of any Pokemon game using only your starter and no one else, but players run around catching other Pokemon. You can climb to rank 1 challenger in League of Legends using only one champion, and many people do, but the vast majority of us prefer to play multiple champions to keep things interesting. That is the primary reason why we pull for new characters. For all intents and purposes, we can complete the game's quests, domains, and whatnot using only the game's free units. Amber, Kaya, Lisa, and on occasion the free 4 stars awarded to us during events and such like Shanling and Xingqiu to name a few. While many 4 stars are more than capable of contending with 5 stars in practice, there's a clear marked difference in strength and capability between a 5 star character and a 4 star. Compounding this with how much more exposure those 5 star characters get such as trailers, teasers, and even storyline involvement, Genshin Impact psychologically implies that its full experience requires you to get as many 5 stars as feasibly possible even if your existing lineup of units gets the job done perfectly fine. With every character boasting their own personality, playstyle, and niche, it suggests the possibility that your enjoyment of the game will be all the greater if you had them for yourself, regardless of whether that's true, and it's the very same marketing strategy businesses use to tempt you into impulse purchases. 
Yelan has been out for some time now, and the widespread dissemination of her character has inundated any media platform you've hit up by now. On Twitter, you're probably seeing millions of people posting artwork on her. On YouTube, you might have seen her videos on the main channel, the special program livestream, as well as the however many YouTubers posting montages and guides on how to use her and how strong she is. In game, you've likely just got done exploring the new expansion, one that Yelan was very involved in from a narrative standpoint. Your friends, if they also play Genshin, have probably been talking about her nonstop, especially the ones that got her. This, in conjunction with the pressure of the next opportunity of getting her being uncertain, is what puts the notion in your head that even though you already have child, Kokomi, Ayato, and Shincho, tons of Hydro units that have been credited to team, Yelan can give you a better experience. All that exposure forces your immediate attention onto her, which diverts your awareness of everything else. It's like that one meme with the guy walking with the blue girl and then turning around to check out the red girl. Unfortunately, unless you delve deep into the dubious rat hole of Genshin leaks, there's no way to tell if the next unit really does offer you a better experience or not. And even if you decide against it, there's a chance something might come out in the future that said unit excels at handling. That's what's been happening with everyone who skewed Kazuha, thinking they didn't need him. I'm willing to bet money that his rerun might very well be the highest grossing banner of all time, dead ass. The second determining factor is that of convenience. Each person places an arbitrary value on money which is then compared to other things of value. If the value of money exceeds that of whatever it's being compared to, they will choose to save that money instead of spend it. Vice versa, if they find the other option to be more important to them than money, they will spend that money instead of save it. The most apt example of this is the age-old battle of time versus money. Gacha games and mobile games as a whole are, in my opinion, a very interesting paradox. The cardinal endeavor of any video game is to entice their players into consuming it for as long as possible as often as possible. You want people to play your game ideally until the end of time, right? Yet gacha games intentionally restrict how much you can do in any given day, also known as time gating. In a similar fashion to a paywall, time gating is a common system in video games, notably mobile titles, where a feature of the game or the game itself has a limited number of uses or playtime which only resets when the next period begins, usually known as a daily refresh. That is, unless the player opts to pay extra. Also, another thing that's contrary to popular belief, time gating has been around decades before the first gacha game ever came out. Remember arcades? They literally restrict how long you can play for based on how many tokens you put in. And to get tokens, you had to exchange real money. A lot of free-to-play games like MMOs offer you a choice between grinding hours, days, weeks, months, years to reach your next milestone, or buying your way through it. I used to play MapleStore for a long time, as I'm sure many of you have, and they had items that you could buy with Nexon Cash, which is essentially their version of Genesis Crystals that would upgrade your equipment. However, it was possible for you to get those items or something similar in-game, of course, at a fraction of a fraction of the pace. So in theory, if you dedicated enough time, you would eventually get to where you wanted, but the conversion was skewed so heavily in money's favor that any rational individual would be out of their minds to choose a time option. On top of that, instant gratification is one hell of a drug, just look at how many people are willing to pay almost double the price of their order on Uber Eats or DoorDash just for the convenience of not having to go outside and get it themselves. As mentioned earlier, more often than not, the characters you already have are enough to handle virtually any content Genshin has to offer from now into perpetuity. The difficulty scaling hasn't really changed all that much from back then. Naturally though, 5 star characters are of a higher caliber than 4 stars and by extension newer 5 stars tend to be stronger than old ones. Rather than figure out a working strategy with your existing lineup, it seems more efficient to just get whatever unit is featured on the banner since a lot of gacha games love to introduce content that the new character just so happens to conveniently be very good at. Veteran gacha players know exactly what I'm talking about. So a lot of you might be asking, why would anyone believe that spending hundreds of dollars a month comes anywhere close to the amount of benefit they get out of it? Good question. It really shouldn't. For the amount of progress we earn, or the increase in efficiency from pulling the new meta-defining unit, these 5 stars should cost no more than 50 bucks at most. Sounds a bit counterintuitive for Hoyo to make things overpriced as wouldn't that eliminate a lot of people who would potentially be willing to splurge more often if rates were less extortionate? Yes and no. Gacha games make most of their money by going after quality over quantity. Simply put, they would rather have one player spend $1,000 than 10 players spend $100 each because that $1,000 player, also known as a whale, is less likely to discontinue their spending habits over uncontrollable factors. Or in other words, whales are more likely to keep whaling than dolphins are to keep... uh... dolphining, I guess. Every now and then, an article is released online on a person who mired themselves in thousands of dollars worth of credit card debt over their impulsive microtransaction spending. But the majority of whales in games are usually people with very good income who can afford discretionary spending more frequently. From a business standpoint, it's more prudent for companies to go after those types of consumers as that ensures a more stable bottom line of revenue. 
With this in mind, they priced their microtransactions high enough to generate solid profit margins, but low enough to where the average middle upper or upper class person can spend that amount of money on a weekly or monthly basis without so much as a second thought. Pay to win players are also more susceptible to the sunk cost fallacy. If you spend a thousand dollars on something, you're gonna wanna get the most out of it, right? Free to play players have no skin in the game, so there's less incentive for them to continue playing beyond their personal enjoyment. To a lesser extent, that applies to light spenders and dolphins, the ones who get the battle pass premium, the welkin blessings, and, you know, an occasional hundred bucks every now and then. Whales are also less likely to be impacted by sudden financial disruptions such as a medical emergency or temporary loss of income, as anyone who's able to blow that much cash on a video game probably has a good financial safety net, in theory anyway, whereas dolphins etc might discontinue spending if the money gets tight due to circumstance. So with all that laid out, let's finally get around to answering the question, is Genshin Impact too expensive? In all honesty, it depends on the context. Now that the game's been out for over a year and a half, it's clear that characters don't fall off very quickly. Release units are still viable to this day, so depending on how long you continue playing Genshin, a 5 star costing on average like 100 bucks is not half bad. Let's say for example, Ganyu. Chances are, anyone who's pulled for her in her debut has logged at least 100 hours on her. So in that sense, it's perfectly reasonable, given that she's still an essential staple in many team comps. If we're talking about stuff like 5 star constellations, then no doubt, they are objectively not worth it, just for a small increase in effectiveness. But if your only concern is getting the base 5 star, then frankly speaking, I've seen worse. Much worse. However, that doesn't mean Genshin's pricing is blameless. Even though its rates are in the middle as far as gacha standards go, it's one of the worst when it comes to free rewards. Many other titles give players tons of free pulls just by playing the game, at least enough for a daily single pull, some of them even give it to you for free. I believe the most amount of primo gems you can get per month is around the neighborhood of like 4500. Considering the hard pity for a 5 star is 14,400, you're only going to get a 5 star once every 3 months or so. In their defense, Hoyo doesn't regurgitate 10 new characters a week like some other gotchas do, but usually they put out one new 5 star per month. So depending on how lucky your 50-50s are, you'll be able to get the 5 star of your choice every 3-6 to six months. Not that great. While I do appreciate that the pity count doesn't reset with each new banner and actually carries over, I dislike how much of an ultimatum it places on spending real money. Again, a hundred bucks for 50 pulls is not the worst I've seen. My problem is how free to play unfriendly this game is. Whales will always spend money no matter how much of a ripoff it is, but that doesn't mean you should completely alienate a free to play's ability to get units without burning their wallet. If there were a myriad of ways you can get primo gems in game like say instead of 4500 you could get 10,000 a month, that would be extremely beneficial not just for free to plays but whales as well. The former can have access to more 5 stars and thus a more complete experience of the game, while the latter might feel incentivized to go after 5 star constellations, which even for whales are far too expensive to go for. I don't know a single person who unironically goes after C6 on every banner. For me anyways, the farthest I'm willing to go is C1 or C2. Though if hypothetically I could get the base unit through just playing the game, then I might be more inclined to go for C2 or C3. Making Genshin more accessible for free to plays doesn't necessarily lessen or diminish the spending habits of whales, and I think that's what Hoyo is failing to understand. They're tunnel visioning too hard on big spenders like it's black and white, either they choose the big fish or the small fish, but empirically speaking, it is possible to cater to both. It might even be better for their bottom line if they did. There is a saying that generosity begets generosity. If the player base notices how magnanimous the game's developers are, they'd feel more inclined to support those developers and therefore reciprocate. There are tons of people who could have been whales but chose not to because they feel disillusioned by Hoyo's practices. Food for thought, you know? Anyways, that's gonna be it for today. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you have, it would be awesome if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other discussion videos after this one. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.